there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Natalie. Oh no. This is a disgrace. <laughs> when was the last time you wore that? Tonight on Location, 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 it's tears and laughter as we give you the definitive guide on how to sell your property. That's the fireplace, that's the window, <laughs> and that's where we keep the telly. <laughs> more people are buying and selling property than ever before. Over the last six weeks, Kirsty and I have been helping people to buy. But this week, the tables are turned. This week, we're going to show you how best to sell a property within two weeks. This is the house we're going to be selling. It's a two-storey, semi-detached Victorian cottage. And these are the owners, David and Natalie. I'm Dave, um, bought this house about two and a half years ago. Um, really uh, seemed the ideal house at the time, but um, since buying the house I met Natalie and uh, we've just got married and we've decided we'd like to get a, a slightly bigger house, so um, that's why we're, we're selling. So when Natalie moved in, David's bachelor pad just didn't seem the same. I turned up to the house, the house looked appalling. Well, it had... <laughs> Certainly when Natalie moved in, she said to me, what on earth have you done in here? There were no carpets on the floor, there was no curtains, there was nothing in the house at all. So I had to put a, a nice womanly touch on the house. <laughs> <laughs> they've loved it, made their mark on it, but now they've outgrown it and it's time to move on. So they've decided to sell their house. And selling a property is all about three things. Location, location, location. So let's check out the neighbourhood. Kingston is just half an hour from London and a recent survey established that residents of Kingston are among the happiest across Greater London, with 95% of them saying that they're pleased with their neighbourhood and reporting good schools, shops and green space. It's very much an up-and-coming area these days. No wonder young professionals are flooding in. Kingston's a town that's coming alive, isn't it? Pubs. Restaurants. It's got one of the best schools in the country. The shops, yeah. obviously. Gyms. Bit of everything, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then you've got the good nightlife, yeah. Lovely for shopping. Beautiful people. It's up-and-coming town. Great house, great street, great town. Ticks in all the boxes. It should be a breeze to sell this property. But it's not quite as simple as we first thought. We've had the house on the market for about 18 months now and there are probably some aesthetic reasons why we're not actually clenching the deal and going for it. We've certainly had people come round to the house um, and said, well, they like it, but it's a little bit small and subsequently bought another property in the same street. Mm -hmm. Now, the houses are exactly the same. So why are David and Natalie finding it so hard to shift their house? Outside the house isn't probably not looking as good as it could. Um, there may be some clutter around, but we have been trying really hard. And every time someone comes around and has a look, we tidy up, we clean up as much as we possibly can. But it's obviously not doing the job at the moment, so we need some help. It's time to see what we've let ourselves in for. David and Natalie's house is a two-bedroom, semi-detached Victorian property. It's on the market for £194,950. So what has it got to offer a prospective buyer? In a state agent spiel, it has a small living room leading through into the kitchen and a separate larger dining room. Upstairs, there's a master bedroom to the front and a smaller bedroom to the rear. The bathroom is large and bright and overlooks the south-facing garden. Bit of a different challenge this week, Kirsten. Very different challenge. Oh, look. Phil, you're going to have to get your boiler suit out and your sledgehammer. I don't think they sell those in Savile Row, Kirsty. Right, time for a long, hard look at what we have to work with. We need to establish what are the good points and what are the bad points. Yeah, it's a really nice room, a bit small, which might be a slight problem. 
but what you have to remember is that when you're selling the house you've not got to think about how you usually live yes. you've got to think of it as a film set it's about how it can look its best its biggest its lightest its brightest it's inconvenient and possibly it restrains you for a certain amount of time yeah. but it's the quickest way to sell your house should we go and have a look at the kitchen okay a kitchen can make or break a sale. A grotty one is expensive to replace and most people can't afford to. Luckily, this one's in great nick. It's so fantastically sunny in here, isn't it? It's is nice, yes. It's such a nice kitchen. You've obviously redone it in the time that you've been here, have you? Yeah, yes. when I first moved in, we had the kitchen changed because all the units were falling apart mm. and the cooker wasn't working properly, mm. so I thought it was worth getting the whole thing done. Mm. Lovely and bright with the two windows, yeah. and it's a really neat, compact little kitchen. I wouldn't make any suggestions at all about uh, trying to alter it or do anything. You are moving out of this house because it's too small for you, but the absolute most vital thing is that it shouldn't look like that because someone looking around it is going to be thinking, well, if they're moving out because it's too small for them, mm. maybe it's going to be too small for us. So overflowing cupboards, anything which smacks of a size problem, you've got to eradicate. So the kitchen scored top marks, and it has a decent living room with a great garden to boot. See your garden, top little garden. Yes. Uh, Are you keen gardeners? Uh, well, as you can or, tell, or not. Um, don't <laughs> tend to spend too much time in the garden, apart from for barbecues and, you know, when friends come round in the summer. Yeah. We're going to try and do as much as we can for as little as we can. Width-wise, this is really beginning to encroach yeah. in the garden. Yeah. So we could chop that back. And we're talking half an hour's work. Yeah. So far, so good. Right. Is this the dining room? This is the dining room. This is the dining room. Okay. So why are there six large boxes which say underwriting boxes on them? Because we did clear out half of the papers that were in the drawers upstairs. Oh, I see. But I think there's more to go. Now we're beginning to see what the problem is. There's no storage in this house and the boxes are only the start. Is there anywhere else you can put stuff? Not in here, you can't. Much as I thought, I'm afraid, Dave. A fair bit of stuff in there you're not using. Yeah. Now, you're preparing to sell, so therefore you're getting ready to move out. OK. So you've got to be emptying your shed, so we might as well clear it out now. Right, OK. So, there seems to be a theme right. developing here. These cottages were built before CDs and mountain bikes, and Natalie and David's hobbies are testing its capacity. Let's start with downstairs. Let's see what happens in the bedroom department. Hmm, Dave, got some quite serious restrictions going on in this room. OK. You've had about a dozen viewings or so? Yeah, something like that. And have they been couples or singles? Mainly couples, bit of a mixture. Who gets to climb over who? <laughs> Depends. Who gets to bed first? <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that they're coming in here and arranged as it is with the bed pushed up against the wall. Yeah. They go, well, there's no room for us. Yeah. It's not big enough. And I think... Presented like this, it's not big enough. Right. But it's not a small room. We can, we can do something with this. Yeah. Remember, when you're selling a house, presentation is everything. You may have the bed squashed up against the wall to fit in that extra chest of drawers, but this isn't going to show the room off to its best advantage. OK, Kirsty, so this is our back room. Right, what do you use it for? We use it mainly for the computer and the internet. So you really do use this room? Yes, we do. Because it does look a bit like a dumping ground. Hmm. For unused <laughs> bits of furniture. And why is the bedside lamp in a plastic fruit box? <laughs> Um, it's, it's an inbox that's not actually used as an inbox. Well, it's an in-tray. In-tray, yes. Well, it's an out-tray now. <laughs> it's going out. It's going in the bed. OK. OK. Um, what's all this under the bed? Uh, Though they may have tidied their house before prospective buyers came round, right, okay. we're beginning to see why it's been on the market for eight uh, months now. This house is just crammed full. What have we got in here? <laughs> it's full. Dave. It is like That's, all the cupboards. The whole house is full. Yeah, and you're really you're giving that impression. Yeah. When was the last time you wore that? Uh, it was last week, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We keep coming back to this word impression and, yeah. and that's all we're trying to do is make an impression. You've got okay. one chance and that's when they come round. So the house has got to look right 
every time anyone comes round. It's becoming clear that David and Natalie don't often get round to throwing things out. Natalie. Oh, no. This is a disgrace. <laughs> you need to take everything out. You need to go through it all. Anything that you do wear, obviously you keep. We're not going to make you throw away your clothes. Anything you don't wear, take down to Oxfam. Yes. Because, again, we're trying to create this illusion that you're not moving out because it's lack of space. Right. We're going to tell people that you're moving because of work and getting to work. It's a geographical thing, not a space thing. And every cupboard has to create that impression. We're going to make the room look as if it's used as both a bedroom and a study. It's going to be lighter and it's going to have less clutter. God, what is under... I, I can hardly look. <laughs> I'm just going to close it back up again. Potential buyers want to be able to see a lifestyle in your house, not your style of living. And a cupboard that smells like old shoes is going to turn anyone off. Create functional living spaces. Make every room look its best. A good shakedown, some brightening up and a little reorganisation. All this seems fairly achievable. But there are a couple of larger problems. Uh, Dave, your window here is not in its uh, best condition. It's no, it's pretty a bit rotten, rotten, isn't it? rotten the whole way through. Yeah. It's rotten, it's clear for everyone to see, and it's definitely going to come up in a survey. Yeah. The biggest problem is the wall. The roots from the garden are pushing it outwards, and it's at the point of collapse. It looks terrible. It's going to have to be rebuilt, which could burn a hole in their pockets. We've been all over the house, and we've got a lot to do. But I think it's polishing a gem. I don't think we're making a rotten house look good. Preparing a property to sell is not about going out and buying a whole lot of things to make your house look like the ones in the mags. It's about looking at what you've got, removing anything which prevents you seeing the, the glory of what you've got, and paring everything down. And that shouldn't cost you a fortune. But there are two things that it would cost to fix. Firstly, the window that I pointed out to you, Dave, when we were outside. Yeah. That's seen better days. It is rotting. That's going to cost a few hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, whilst it, I don't think it's a deal breaker. If someone's got to the back of the house and they're still enjoying the house, yeah. they're not going to go, oh, I'm not going to buy it because I don't like the yeah. window. But I would suggest that we get a quote so we can say to someone, look, it's not a major issue. This is what it's going to cost. Yeah. Mm. But the wall at the front, that is yeah. perhaps a deal breaker. Mm. It really makes a, an impression. It's the first and the last thing people yeah. are going to see. Mm. So I think it would be worth spending some money there. Okay. Mm. It's a question of not spending more than we need to as we're selling sure, the house, absolutely. but enough to make sure we get a good price. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're going to spend money anywhere, that's the place to spend it. Okay. But we've got a lot to do, so I think we should get on with get it. Okay. Declutter. Throw things away. Be ruthless. If you haven't worn something in the last 12 months, chuck it. Take your old clothes to the charity shop or make some money and sell them at your local car boot sale. If it's a big job, get in the professionals. We'd like you to come and take a look at a front garden wall. Well, if you could come over today and um, let us know, take a proper look, that would be excellent. Clear up. Don't leave stuff lying around in boxes or bin bags. Put them into storage. A secure unit will cost you around £18 a week. A buyer must be able to imagine themselves living here. You want them hooked as soon as they walk through your door. We're making a big double bed with you, Dave. <laughs> When we arrived, they kept on saying it's a small house and that's why it's not selling. I don't think it's a small house at all. The rooms no. are all a good size. No, it was a cluttered house. And what we've made them do is pack everything away and then it looks like a bigger, cleaner space. I think declutter is the, is the key word. The old kitchen door has been sitting on the landing for three months. Time to shift it. Now is the time to do all those jobs you've been meaning to do for months. Finally, that film set's beginning to shape up. With the clutter gone, we couldn't help noticing that something was wrong. This rather small living room and larger dining room feel the wrong way round. This shouldn't be the dining room. It's a much bigger room, this. Have you ever used it as a sitting room? Yes, we did originally have this as a sitting room. I think that we should swap the two rooms back again. Our plan is to completely swap the rooms around, make the dining room into the sitting room and the sitting room into the dining room. I think it will make everything seem much more spacious. We're going to shift this table next door. OK. OK. okay. Careful with that antique furniture, Kirsty. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And then, oh, you OK? Ow! If you're trying to make something feel as spacious as possible, you should be able to fling open every door 
And this door doesn't really open properly with the table there. I'm much happy with the table here. We're going to move on to the next thing. Come on, put your backs into it, guys. Maximising space is the name of the game, so it's time for upstairs to get the same treatment. What we want to do is create the illusion of space so that people don't come in here and say, oh, it's a small house with a lot of furniture in it. The second bedroom in this house is really small, only nine foot by six foot. But by removing the curtains, the clutter and some of the furniture, we can make it feel like a proper sized bedroom. Good start. After our first day, the house is getting into shape, but we still have a lot to do if we want to sell this property in two weeks. It's day two, the rooms are all tidied, and it's time to look at the details. We've created the stage, now we have to dress the set. Pay attention to detail. Change your plastic Lucy for a wooden one. Get a light pull that matches your bathroom. Hide your old shampoo, buy posh products for display. Sort out your bookshelves, arranging your books in order of height to give your shelves form and structure. The final thing is colour. The key is to turn your rooms into a blank canvas, so no strong colours here. Which brings us to that red wall, which came from where exactly? We went on honeymoon to Morocco. We did come back with a bit of a Morocco Theme, so which is why we've changed one of our rooms into sort of give it a try and give it a Moroccan theme. Sorry guys, your red is out and white is always in. Remember, you're selling, so no time to get sentimental about a colour scheme. Time to get your roller out, Natalie. So you've cleared out, done the jobs you should have done when you moved in, and now it's time to give it the biggest clean of its life. If you're in a hurry, call in the industrial cleaners for around £250. If not, your mates are free. Can you come round this afternoon? How about coming over and giving us a hand doing the house up? Get round your green-fingered friends. Clean that kitchen floor till it sparkles. Keep going with that paint. We're talking about the practical things you can do to the house without spending lots of money on it. Don't go buying new garden furniture, bleach it clean. A large garden in a house like this is a huge asset, but it's not selling itself. This one hasn't been touched all winter, and it looks like it. A day's hard labour and a few pots, and it will be completely transformed. Whilst preparing to sell your house and creating this fabulous impression, you don't want a buyer to presume they're getting everything they see. Be clear about what items are included in your asking price. The cooker, the new loose seat, the light fittings are all in that grey area. The key here is be prepared. Ask your solicitor to send you a fixes and fittings form which you'll need to fill in and return. This can then be attached to your contract of sale as soon as you accept an offer. So, up until now, we've only spent £112. But this is where the big money starts. The new wall is going to cost £600. For that, the builders will demolish the old one, remove the route that were forcing it outwards and build us a new one. The original quote was £700. Get several and then negotiate. You've got nothing to lose and everything to save. Darren, that original wall was looking pretty dangerous. What was it that was actually damaging it? Well, the roots on the back were pushing it over. What we've done at the moment, we just cut the ivory off the wall and taking the wall away. So what we do once the wall's gone off, we start from the back and work our way in. Yeah. And it should take care just of it. Take it away. So it's the end of two long days. We chucked out all the junk, rejigged a couple of rooms and kissed that Moroccan theme goodbye. It's cost David and Natalie a total of £712. All we have to do now is sell this house and there'll be quids in. I'm exhausted. Um, <laughs> you are. It is such hard work and I am knackered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
In part two, we'll be showing you what to look out for in a good estate agent. Agent seems like a nice bloke. No sign of a dorsal fin. We're in Kingston, where Phil and I are helping to sell this two-bedroom, semi-detached Victorian house. In our first two days, we concentrated on turning David and Natalie's cosy cottage into a palace. First, we got rid of the clutter. Then we moved the furniture to maximise the space, pulled back the curtains and gave it a bright white lick of paint. Then the garden got the makeover treatment and finally we put the front wall out of its misery and built a new one. Total cost £712. Now that the house has been given the star treatment, it's time to remarket it and try to sell it. This is going to be the big challenge. Well, we uh, first put the property in the market last spring, um, but it was kind of a funny time because we were just about to get married and there was loads and loads to do for that. So we were a little bit half-hearted and, and we weren't that pleased with, with the agent we put it on with, to be honest. So we, we kind of we gave up heart, a bit with we? them. Hold on, guys. When you're talking about handing over your house for someone to sell, the biggest financial transaction you're ever likely to make, you can't afford to feel worried about it. Over one and a half million properties come to the market every year in the UK, the vast majority of which are sold by estate agents. There are estate agents on every corner, and how do you know which one to choose? It's not necessary for an agent to have any professional qualifications before setting up shop on a high street near you. So how do you go about picking a good one? For a start, check their credentials. Make sure they're either a member of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors or the National Association of Estate Agents. Then you need to narrow your search further. Start with personal recommendations and reputation. But you could try posing as a buyer to see how they treat you. This can be a real eye-opener. Ask him about houses like yours. Does he sound enthusiastic about that type of property or would he rather be selling castles than cottages? Talk to your estate agent face to face. Consider your gut feeling. Do you get on with them? Are you comfortable with them? Do they give you confidence? After all, you could be working with them for quite a while. And remember to check which person at the agency will be looking after you. The person you meet may not be the one managing your property. Another key consideration is local knowledge. It's a startling fact that 70% of people move houses within their own area. Once you've chosen your shortlist, it's time to take them for a test drive. Get them round to the house and see what they're really like. Hi, Hello. come in, come in, come in. Nice Thank to you. see you again. Firstly, listen to him. Does he know what he's talking about? In the age of spin, right. house buyers are becoming aware of crafty estate agents speak. Bully him for ideas on how to make your house more marketable. Yeah. Decide the top yeah. ten sales points so, for your property. Good. It's free advice. It's not unusually small. I'm no builder, yeah. but I'm sure we could manage to move this wall out, yeah. still retain a reasonable width of landing, and you could that would transform this bedroom. Um, See, how much would it add to it? It would, it would add about an extra foot and a half on this room. But you'd be surprised Do you think? how that changes the dynamic of, of the room. Certainly increase saleability. The queue of buyers would be longer. Check that the estate agent has buyers on his books. Successful ones will have plenty. Finally, when an agent comes round, see if he can value your beloved house there and then. Depending upon the urgency of sale, I would say either side of 200. Well, I think 195 is the right price then to sell, to sell in the next few days. Hold it, guys. We have one house here, but two values, and they're five grand apart. That's a big difference in this cutthroat market. So how do you know whether an estate agent's valuation is a good one or not, since it could be the difference between sale and no sale? Getting a ballpark valuation on how much your house is worth is a simple process. Firstly, find out what the properties in your street are selling for. That will give you a rough idea. Then, be nosy. Pose as a buyer and check out the competition. This house sold in just 48 hours for £200,000. Guess what? It's just two doors down from David and Natalie. Whilst on the outside it's the same, inside it's a different story. It has masses of period detail and clever use of space. Upstairs, the landing wall has been removed to make space for a double bed. 
they've converted the bathroom into a second spare room and built a loo downstairs behind the kitchen. Very impressive. Then there's this cottage, just a couple of roads away. It's on the market for £195,000, the same as David and Natalie's. It's another good-looking house. And the inside is a treat, including added luxuries like this fireplace in the bathroom. It's becoming clearer why David and Natalie's house, in its original condition, hasn't attracted the buyers. But with the new makeover, we think it's in a good position to achieve the asking price of £194,950. After you've done your homework, always get three valuations and take the average. Whatever happens, don't be seduced or flattered by the highest valuation. Remember, if it's too high, it won't sell. So we caught up with David and Natalie after they'd finished work. Sometimes agents will give a high valuation in order to get the instruction. Six weeks on, house hadn't sold, they'll say, oh well, maybe it's a bit optimistic. Let's bring the price down. What's important for us now is to actually find a price where we can sell the property. Yeah. Um, we had it on too high before and as a result didn't sell and the property became uncompetitive. It was too highly priced. Would you sell it for 195000 Yes. I think, so. yeah. I think so. I think so. Right. Great. Okay. Hi, Natalie. It's Andy. From Stack and Andy is the estate agent David and Natalie chose to sell their house so three months ago. Oh, what does he think the, the problem is? There are lots of buyers out there. But they are taking their time at the moment. In Kingston, you've got many cottages exactly the same. Yeah. And so um, it's just trying to make them stand out, really. David and Natalie have decided to stick with Andy. So what will he think of our hard work? Andy, hi. Hi. Come in. Nice to see you. Come this way. Wow. Things uh, should look a bit different. They've certainly changed a lot, haven't they? We now have a dining room. Real transformation. Well, come through. OK. Well, this felt like a huge dining room, and that felt like a small lounge. Now it feels just right. Yep, looking forward to seeing it. Looks the like Andy's impressed with the downstairs, but the upstairs was never a strong point. What will he make of it? This looks massively different. It just looks so much bigger, this room. It's always it a good sign when the well. agent is excited. Remember, he may well have similar houses to yours on his books. You need to know that he's enthusiastic about yours above all others. All good stuff, then. You're going to definitely sell it this weekend. <laughs> and I will buy it. <laughs> and the finale. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? It's just like a new house, almost. All we've done is helped you yeah. own your fee. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> You're, You're very kind. Nice. Aha, the fee. It always comes down to money. Once you've chosen an estate agent that you can work with, it's time to do a deal. This is where you should exercise your haggling skills. Don't be scared to negotiate. For a house of this size, you should expect to pay an agent from 1% to 2% of the value of your sale. Always negotiate your estate agent's fee. Check for any extra charges before you sign. All advertising and marketing should be included in your package. And expect to pay a larger fee if you have two or more agents trying to sell your house at the same time. So you've made all the improvements, the house is in the best condition it has ever been in, and now you've got an estate agent to sell it. It's time to put him to work. First things first, what will be in the shop window? These are the details for Natalie and David's house. When you first put your property on the market, the agent will send you a set of preliminary details for you to sign off. Don't just sign on the dotted line, look through them. Start with the photograph. Does it show the property in the most flattering light? If you made an effort and tidied up before they came round and you think it doesn't look good, get them to come back and redo it. State agents' details are not an added bonus, they're part of the service that you're paying for. So, with our new look, we're getting Andy back to take new photographs. He'll then have a week to advertise it. And this time, let's hope he gets us some buyers. Andy, you've come back to photograph the outside of the house yeah. with our new wall. Yeah. But do you think we could have an additional photograph? Because I think now that everything's decluttered and lighter and brighter. Oh, definitely, yeah. A photograph here. Get the garden, the kitchen, the sort of very clear empty space leading through to the, mm. to the kitchen. The other thing I wanted to say is now that we've swapped the living room and the dining room, yeah. could it say dining room leading through to kitchen? It's great if they understand the, the way mm. it flows. 
Make alterations where you see fit and use them to highlight the best points of your property. Whilst a photograph of a tidy styled room is a good starting block, you can get more creative. It's all about image. If you've got a fancy car, park it in the driveway. If you haven't, your estate agent's bound to, so nick his. Remember, everything helps. Make your house look as aspirational as possible. So remember, take control. Check what's written and make sure you show your property off to the best advantage. Once the particulars are in the estate agent's window, you can relax and have a well-earned rest. But for those of you with a bit more time on your hands, here's how you can sell your house yourself. There are different ways of doing it, but you could start by taking out an advertisement. There's local and national papers, paid for and free advertising. Pick a publication that has a dedicated property section. Give the figure you want, a good description of the property and list the times when it could be viewed. Then there's also the internet. Many estate agents now use it as their primary marketing tool, and you can too. All you have to do is log on as a buyer, work out which sites you like, register yourself as a seller. You conduct the viewings, take the offers and negotiate the deal. Simple as that. Hopefully, once you've conducted the viewings, you should receive some offers. Here's where it gets tricky. It's down to you to talk money. This method only works for people who have the time and confidence to negotiate their own sale. Remarketed and ready to roll, David and Natalie are looking forward to showing their house to some potential buyers. We just have to wait and see how many there are. If you're showing someone new into your bedroom, David, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Just stand back and don't say anything. No way! We're in Kingston, where Kirsty and I are helping David and Natalie sell their house within two weeks. So far, so good. Having turned the house into a hot property, now we just have to sell it. David and Natalie haven't had to spend a huge amount of money getting the house ready to sell. But that is set to change in 2003 with the introduction of the seller's pack. This is like a car logbook and will contain all the details and information relating to your property, including a home condition report, which is a bit like a survey, prepared and paid for by the seller. The seller's pack is a good idea in principle. Instead of the current buyer's beware, it will be seller's prepare. The pack hopes to speed up property transactions by making the whole process more transparent. The downside is that it'll cost the seller around £700 to prepare, and that's before the house even goes on the market. And will a buyer really trust a survey commissioned by the seller? Secondly, how long is the survey meant to last for? Tricky questions. On the other hand, most of the legal stuff will be done at the beginning of the process, not at the end, which should reduce the risk of last-minute gazumping or gazundering. So, David and Natalie's house is as ready as it will ever be. It's time to show it to some buyers. Today is the day when we find out if all our hard work is going to pay off. We've got three viewings happening very shortly. Now, either we can show them around, or if you're happy to, perhaps you should. We'll be able to give it a go, I think. Yeah, let's try. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. It's a science, it really is, and there are some do's and don'ts. So if you can face some more bossing around... Uh, we should... <laughs> yeah, I'm not used to it now, Kirsty. I know, but we should get in there and, and go through them. OK, let's go. You need to know which route you're going to take round the house and whether you'll lead your prospective buyers or follow right. them. In a small right. house like David and Natalie's, you want to make the place feel as large as possible, so it's best to let the buyer lead the way. So you stand here, you don't take up much space, and the other thing you don't do is point out the obvious. Like. So don't stand here saying, that's the fireplace, that's the window, <laughs> and that's where we keep the telly, OK? <laughs> Just stand back and don't say anything. Perhaps a small comment about how you like the room, and always bear in mind that you're loath to leave this house. It's always got to be, I love this house, I'm loath to leave it, and it's perfect, don't you think so? You are moving because of work, right. okay? Right. You're not moving because the house is too small, and uh. you don't want to let that slip out at any moment. Right. If you're showing someone new into your bed from David. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that often happens. But if well, you, not since I've been married. <laughs> OK, fair comment. But if, if you're showing somebody around the house, as opposed to letting them wander around, yeah. make sure they've got enough time 
It's often said that people spend more time looking over a second-hand car than they do looking over a house. Mm. It's a huge decision, yeah. and you've got to let people have enough time to make it. OK. Now, this is an illustration of what not to do. Don't walk into the room and block the light. Stay right behind the door or perhaps even behind the wall. Don't turn yourself into a one-woman blind because this is fabulous, this window, and so much light comes into this room. It's not particularly big, but it is wonderfully light. It is said that a third of people buy property because they like the owners. So don't blow it by telling embarrassing anecdotes about the fun you had in the bedroom or the amount of time your husband spends in the loo. Too much information can turn a buyer right off. Never apologise for the shortcomings of your house. Be honest but positive. And remember to get quotes for any potential problem areas. So we have three viewings ahead of us, but will any of our buyers bite? Time to make those last minute checks. Disinfect the loo. Put your heating on and open the windows to remove those household smells. Get rid of the bin, hide it in the shed. Oh. And give everything a final polish, including the windows. So the stage is set. Put on something smart but comfortable and get ready to sell, sell, sell. Hi, Hi. how are you? Fine, come in, come in. I'm Natalie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Michelle. Michelle. Hi, Hi, Robert. Hi. OK. First up are Michelle and Robert. They're selling their one-bedroom flat in nearby Surbiton because it's just too small for them. They've been looking for a new pad for eight weeks now. This is what we actually bay, really like wanted to see, window, was yeah. the bay window. Oh, right, yeah. 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 Remember, we want our potential buyers to feel that there's plenty of space throughout the house. We haven't struggled for Just as well we tidied up those cupboards. Do you have yeah. any... Is this the only cupboard you have? There's another... Well, there's another cupboard in the yes. other room. OK. Natalie seems to be handling it quite well, but space does seem to be an issue, and in particular, the size of the second bedroom. It's just not... It's not massive. You know. That's the reason why we want, to, we, want to, we want a proper double room. But if you're going to have it, it's just study as well. Mm. How do you think it's going in there? Badly. Now, this is my favourite room in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a power shower, which is very hard to get out of in the morning. <laughs> so far, so good. Even yeah. though Natalie has just forgotten what Kirsty said about not standing in the windows and blocking out the light. A small mistake to make, but then things really started to go downhill. It's good size. Yeah, what's going on with the frame there? Yeah, that's, um, we, we had hailstones, some very heavy hailstones last year, and they absolutely battered the head out of the window. Natalie, what are you talking about? You forgot to get a quote. Instead of a tall story, you should have told them how much it would cost to get it fixed. They definitely won't forget the giant hailstone story. So how did she feel it went? My natural reaction is to open that door and just welcome someone into my home. So that was probably one of the hardest things, to be reserved and just to, to welcome them in quietly and, um, and show them around the house. But it became difficult to know how much to say and how little to say. So mm. if anything, I said I didn't say very much. Our second potential purchaser is Mr Nake. He has been looking for a property for four months. Hello, Mr Nike. Hi. Come in. Nice to meet you. Natalie. Nice to meet you. He specifically wants to buy this type of house, yes. and he's seen a lot of them. This is the twelfth he's viewed. OK. If this is the one for him, Mr Nake certainly isn't letting on. And you, you a first-time buyer? That's right, yeah. yeah. OK. It is said that people make up their minds in the first 45 seconds of seeing a property. And Mr Nake isn't sticking around for much longer than that. Bye. It's really important to get feedback from the people who view your house. You can't attack them and ask them for their opinion, but your agent can. So encourage him to ring them up and say, what did you think? Listen to what he says, particularly if it's about price. That is the most important aspect. Our third prospective Hello. buyers are Ryan and Hello. Helen, and they've come with their friend Mark. Hi. They rent a house very similar to Natalie and David's, so they know what they're looking for. OK. So this is and straight away, an unexpected feature impresses them. Oh, 
a cat flap. Have you got cats then? No, we don't, but we have, the people before us did have a cat, right. um, so we've got the cat flap. <laughs> they do appear to be genuinely interested, but how will the size of the back bedroom suit them? That's what we're looking for, really, isn't it? Just sort of a spare room and a computer, yeah. computer room type thing, so... That's certainly. That's, that's what I'm looking for, anyway. But it is amazing. All good stuff, and Natalie's definitely it's more relaxed. Nice one to keep. Yeah. This is absolutely gorgeous in the summer. Mm. It is beautiful. And uh, you can sit out here all afternoon and get um, burnt. If you have a positive viewing, it's good to discuss moving dates so each party's position is clear. There's no point having a potential buyer who's tied up for six months when you need to move out now. Because we're renting, we've got a two-month sort of notice period. And when we decide, we'd like to be able to you know, know that we can give our two months notice and then move yes. you know, as soon as... All right, brilliant. That's great. Well, thanks for sharing. That's us all around. right. No problem. Thank great. Thank yeah, you. Very much. Okay. Bye. Take care. Cheers. See you soon. Bye. 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 Mark. Wonder how they got on, Kirsty. Yeah, absolutely. So three viewers. <laughs> Any takers? Hi. Sold the house yet? Not yet. Come in. Michelle and Robert appeared to like the house, but were concerned about the lack of space. Mr. Nake didn't really seem interested. But Ryan, Helen and Mark were doing a lot of smiling. Do you think any of the people who look round today are going to buy your house? Well, we had a little couple to start with. Mm -hmm. She was quite coy. She came in and was very reserved in, in her reactions and also indicated various aspects of the house that she didn't like or, yeah. or various um, um, structures of the house that she felt needed some work, mm -hmm. um, which to me indicates someone who is quite a serious buyer. Yeah. Well, we had Mr Nake. I personally think he was looking to see what he could get for his money in the area. The threesome, um, I don't know if they're serious buyers. I wasn't able to judge that from, from, uh, from their viewing, but, um, and I wouldn't expect an offer from them. So, you're going to have a few more viewings in the week, fingers crossed? Hope so. It's nine days into the process and we're hoping one of our viewers will put in an offer. So we've got to make sure David and Natalie's solicitor is on standby with their contracts drawn up. If you think of a solicitor, you might think Ali McBeal. Nothing quite that glamorous, I'm afraid. Convincing is much more mundane. It simply means the transfer of property ownership. It doesn't even need to involve meeting a solicitor, and a great deal can be done over the telephone. You can find a solicitor through your estate agent or by contacting the Law Society, but at the end of the day, personal recommendation is often best. There's no flat rate and prices will vary from area to area. And don't sign anything until you've seen a written estimate of cost and fees in advance. Remember, unlike an estate agent, solicitors charge by the hour and this is money you will spend even if your sale falls through. So how much will it cost you to sell your house? David and Natalie's asking price is £194,950. From this, they're looking at forking out nearly three grand on agency fees. They've spent £712 preparing the house, and now they have to spend another £600 on a solicitor. So before you know it, you've spent over £4,000 just selling the house, which is why it's so important that you work hard to achieve your asking price. As far as price is concerned, it was too high and then it was too low. Now you can be really confident that you're spot on and you can stick to your guns and say, the asking price is what I want, I will accept no less than that. Make sure that Andy is very clear on that point. I think it's worth bearing in mind that the last two or three thousand pounds that the estate agent does or doesn't negotiate doesn't make a huge amount of difference to his commission. No. It makes a hell of a lot of difference to yeah. yours. For him, it's 10 or 20 pounds. It's the difference in paying your um, stamp duty and your yeah. legal fees and yeah. your server. Yeah. So, there you have it. If you want to sell your house in the shortest possible time, follow our simple steps. Prepare for the sale. Declutter and depersonalise your space. Rope in family and friends to help you. Find an estate agent, go by recommendations, get free evaluations, but make sure you have a value in mind. You don't want to be wasting time with an overpriced property. 
spend time on the particulars. They are your number one marketing tool. And make sure the photo shows off your property's best features. Oh. Prepare for the viewings. If you take them yourself, don't undermine your property. Don't block out the light and be prepared. If you know something needs fixing in the house, have a quote ready. Advise your solicitor that you're selling. Ask him to prepare a draft contract and locate your deeds. So if you get an offer, you're ready to go. Then all that's left to do is wait for an offer. As soon as both buyer and seller are happy with the contract and that contract is signed, a 10% deposit is paid to the seller's solicitors and a date agreed for completion. At this point, contracts can be exchanged and only at this point does the deal become legally enforceable. It is as simple as that. If you stick to the plan, it needn't be a nightmare. It's been a fast and furious few days, but by following these steps, you can minimise the costs whilst maximising your chances of success. I think we've covered everything, but if you do get an offer, remember to stay on top of your solicitor and push the whole thing through. Make sure that you get some feedback from the estate agent as well. You really want to know how the viewings have gone and what people are saying, what they're thinking, yeah? Okay. Nice. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for your help. Thank Give you. us a Pleasure. ring and tell us Thanks, Thanks okay. guys. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Home from work the following day, and Natalie waits for the telephone to ring. Hello, Natalie speaking. Andy, hi. How are you? Y yeah, go on. No way! Oh my god! Oh my god! So they put the asking price in. Oh Only one day god. after the first viewings of the okay, revamped sorry. property, oh, thanks, David so and Natalie get offered the full asking price. Result. That's really good. It's good, isn't it? That's not bad after one day. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Hi. Who was Hi. it from? Come in. Ryan and Helen. Hi. Maybe the cat Hi. flap swung it. Come in. Oh! 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 It's going to go. Into... Oh! Bye. Good job, Dunkhurst. I know. Success. We've had a great time with David and Natalie. They had their house on the market for eight months and we managed to find them a buyer in two weeks. It just goes to show that being proactive really does work and preparation is key. You can make a difference to the sale of your property without spending huge amounts of money. That's the end of this series. We'll be back later in the year, so see you then. Bye! Bye! Kirsty, I'm surprised you made it all the way through the show in those heels. <laughs> yeah. Chiropractic, here I come. <laughs> <laughs>